from Montana's News Leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on your MTN 530 News right here on Q2. I'm Janelle Slade. Well, another win for solar power producers here in Montana. Montana Supreme Court has issued another ruling in favor of solar power developers and against the State Public Service Commission. This time it affects a proposed solar power project just north of Billings. In a unanimous ruling, the High Court says the PSC did not follow state and federal law when it set contract terms for a proposed 80 megawatt solar power plant. The ruling upholds a lower court order from 2019, which said Montana's Sun should get a fair contract to sell power to Northwestern Energy. Montana Sun says contract terms set by the PSC not only violated state and federal law on renewable power projects, but also made it financially impossible for the project to go forward. Northwestern and the PSC had appealed the lower court ruling in the Supreme Court. The High Court says Montana Sun should get the contract terms spelled out by the state district court's decision. Now, Northwestern and the PSC had argued that rates set by the court would unduly increase costs for Northwestern Electric customers. Another COVID-19 related death reported in Yellowstone County today. The latest victim, a woman in her 60s. The state is also now reporting the death of the Bighorn County man in his 70s that we told you about yesterday. A total deaths across Montana have now reached 165. Health authorities also report 214 new confirmed active cases, but the overall count has dropped by more than 300. Both Yellowstone and Cascade County saw a decline of more than 100 active cases overnight. Big changes are coming to the weather scene. Changes that could flare up wildfires again. Bob McGuire is here now with the very latest. It's just hard to believe because it's such a beautiful day out yes. there. Let me show you what it looked like out there earlier this afternoon. Take a look at this. This is beautiful out there. Look at the leaves are already starting to change. It's the first full day of fall and so it's starting to look a lot like fall but the temperatures they're beginning to feel more like summer still and here's the reason why. Look at this. We have a red flag warning across all of eastern Montana. Montana and North Central, uh, North Central Wyoming. What's going to happen is we're expecting higher winds, high temperatures and low humidities moving into the region. So that means we'll probably see some erratic fire behavior across much of the region. And also that means uh, you'll probably see maybe some new fire starts develop because of all the high winds. And once the fire gets started in that wind condition, it's going to burn out of control in a hurry. So here's why all this is going to happen. We have another warm front that's starting to develop in eastern Montana tonight. And by Thursday morning, it's going to become a total warm front across all of the state. And that's going to warm things up very nicely. Then Right on the heels of that, here comes another cold front, and that'll be moving in, and that'll bring some scattered rain showers. Of course, with rain showers, if there's any lightning, we could see some more fire starts like what happened last night with just a couple of bolts of dry lightning moving in there. Sometimes that's just enough to get some fires going. Anyway, we'll have the rest of your forecast in a few more minutes. All right, thanks so much, Bob. Well, the damage is now being assessed at Mount View Cemetery after a vehicle crashed through that area early Sunday morning, and police have located and issued citations to the driver. Lieutenant Brennan Woolley says a single vehicle crash caused the damage. Woolley tells Q2 the driver, 30-year-old Brad Dugas of Billings, was not injured and left the scene. Police have cited Dugas for reckless driving, failure to remain at the scene of an accident, and failure to give notice of that crash. Cemetery Director Chris Wait says 29 headstones are left damaged. It was initially thought 32 were damaged, but three were just covered by a tree. Now, Wait says the Veterans Administration will help with replacements. Crews got cleaned up the day of the accident. We wanted to make the site safe immediately. That was our first concern was just to get the debris out and the broken shards out. And so um, we called in our crew right after the accident and they were here most of Sunday, um, you know, hauling out the pieces and then taking them down um, to a storage facility so we could kind of sort through the damage there. Now, Chris Waite says he does not have an estimate when the headstones will arrive, but says late October is about the time when cold weather will shut down repairs for the year. Tonight, Q2's David J will have more on this story at 10 o'clock. Well, if you're still undecided in the race for Montana's next governor, maybe their running mates will help you decide. The two candidates for lieutenant governor have strong connections and deep roots in Montana. Democrat Casey Schreiner grew up in Great Falls and graduated from Montana State University. Schreiner is completing his fourth and final term in the Montana House, where he serves as a minority leader. Republican Kirsten Juris was born and raised in Conrad, Montana. She got her undergraduate degree from the University of Montana before going to law school in Georgia. She practiced law in Georgia and Oklahoma before returning to Great Falls in 1988. 
Jura says if Gianforte wins in November, she has no plans to take a back seat. For Schreiner, he believes his professional and personal experience are what sets him apart. I am not just going to be a candidate, a lieutenant governor that cuts ribbons. I'm going to go to work cutting the red tape. We will be doing a top to bottom agency review, identifying outdated, unnecessary, redundant regulations. So it's not an accident that Mike chose a former public school teacher, somebody who has actually experienced what education budget cuts do. It's not an accident uh, that Mike picked a special needs parent. Two of my sons are on the autism spectrum. Mike understands that, that we should have diverse perspectives and that every Montana deserves representation. Now, Schreiner was a candidate for governor before dropping out in February. Juris ran unsuccessfully for Montana Supreme Court in 2016. It's well documented reading to children, even newborn babies, helps boost brain development. So for parents with the tiniest patients at St. Vincent Healthcare, why not pick up a book or 20 and reach a goal of reading at least 30,000 words to their new babies who are fighting to survive? Here's Q2's Mitch Laggy with the story. Born just 27 days ago, Barrett and Declan Brown have spent their entire lives thus far in the neonatal intensive care unit at St. Vincent Healthcare. Thanks to the NICU readathon, the twins already have a boost to their brains from the power of books. We know that evidence tells us that reading to your infant early and reading to your children early and often is super, super important. We really, our goal is hopefully that our preemie babies hear about 30,000 words before three. The readathon at St. Vincent's is a part of a national effort to encourage parents of children in the NICU to read to their kids. For the twins' parents, Jamie and Tyler, their reading time offers a welcome break from the monotony of hospital life and the lack of family visitors due to COVID-19 restrictions. It's been a long journey, like she said, 27 days, and, and uh, it's about the the big difference you get because it gets pretty routine, you know, you come change diapers and they're uh, still pretty young so they need a lot of sleep so they just uh, sleep in most of the time and, and we get a little bit of time to uh, hold them and, and during that time it breaks it up like you say. The couple said that the readathon really lit a fire to read to their boys. The go-to book for the family is The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carl, one of the many books on the shelf at St. V's. This is the first year St. V's has participated in the National Readathon. Staff say it's increased incentive for parents to read to their kids. Families have been so bought into it. And so I guess everybody needs a little bit of a contest and it kind of breaks up the monotony of COVID. Like you're not many people get to visit. You feel kind of lonely. It's not what you've expected to have a baby in the NICU. So this is kind of a cool way for families in the NICU to feel like oh, something else besides obsessing about a sick baby or obsessing about Nobody's able to come visit my baby. In Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. Thanks so much, Mitch. Now the twins are currently on feeding tubes, but have recently started eating on their own. So the doctor tells us that's a good sign. They may go, get to go home soon. Well, Montana wildfire flames destroyed fossilized memories for a 13-year-old Montana boy. Up next, we dig into the details about how his cherished collection now continues. And in sports, Scott has an update on your fall high school playoffs. He'll fill us in on some noteworthy tweaks.